Hello book lovers, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit. And today I have a rather massive book haul for everybody out there. Uh, so if you watched my previous video, which was the very first video I posted on this particular channel, uh, you already know that I am sort of on a quest to restart my classics library collection. Um, besides that though, I'm also just sort of generally revamping my reading library. And so this month, since it is the first month I'm really diving into this project, I kind of went a little bit crazy. It is my birthday month. So some of these are uh, birthday gifts with gift cards and things like that. But a lot of it is just, I just, I saw books that I'd been thinking about getting for, in some cases, years. And I finally just was like, I'm getting this and I'm going to add it and I'm going to love it. and I'm going to be happy. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a long haul. Uh, I'm not going to talk about each individual book in depth, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the ones that I am particularly excited to add uh, and just otherwise just do a really quick rundown at least as much as I can. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first batch of books that I wanted to quickly talk about were a set that I got from Amazon. Now, I don't buy from Amazon all that often, but they did happen to be having a big sale. It was uh, buy two, get one free, and it was on a huge selection of titles, and I totally got sucked in, uh, particularly by this Haruki Murakami collection of uh, 1984. Uh, FYI, if you aren't super familiar with this particular title, it is called 1984 because in the Japanese it is Ichiku Hachiyon, uh, Q being a homophone, of course, both for the nine and then the English letter Q. So if you were ever wondering why it's like that, that's that's why. Anyway, this is such a cool addition. So this is released uh, in English as it was in the original Japanese in three volumes. So it separates the different storylines out. And um, it's so much easier to read this way. I purchased the hardcover when it first came out here in the States and my copy is pretty much dead. Uh, the binding is super ripped out because I tried to read it in bed and it's a heavy book because it's wicked large. So, you know, binding is only gonna hold up for so long and this, by having it separated into those original three uh, volume releases is so much easier to read. I'm so excited to have this as a copy that I can comfortably check out. Um, I'm a massive, massive fan of Murakami. My first book of his was a Norwegian Wood uh, way back in 2000 when it first was translated into English or at least English for an English speaking audience. They did do another translation uh, for a, an English translation for a Japanese speaking um, public. I think in the 90s, I want to say. I'm not positive on that because, of course, I was not the target demographic at the time. But yeah, I love Norwegian Wood. I've read pretty much everything he's ever done. I love the way he writes. But yeah, if you are a big fan and you don't have this edition, strongly recommend it. I'm super excited to be able to add this to my collection. Um, other titles that I wanted from that big sale, I did finally pick up uh, a hardbound copy of Vicious that matches the other a uh, copy of her, her sequel to it. I had the original copy where it was much more hype, much, much more stylized cover. And I just like my things to match when they can. And this one was on sale. So I picked it up. Um, I am currently reading through the Temeraire books by Naomi Novik. I love Naomi Novik and I'd never read the Temeraire stories before. Uh, so this isn't in any particular order. I'm just grabbing them as I can and listening to them on audiobook when I'm uh, at the office. And I am absolutely enamored with the storyline and the characters and the dragons. And I just, just love it. Uh, and so I definitely want to own physical copies of it. And so super excited to add that to the collection. One of the other items that was in the buy two, get one free was this paperback set of The Hobbit. I have a couple of the big omnibus leather editions and much like my Murakami, they're just hard to read because <laughs> they're so big. They're beautiful. They have illustrations, but I am not holding that thing up when I'm tired. This, however, this I can <laughs> because it's of course separated into all of the different stories. So excited to have this. This was such an exciting find. So this is a illustrated edition of Dracula and the illustrations are from Edward Gorey. 
of he if you've ever watched a masterpiece theater he does the illustrations at the beginning of that but these illustrations in particular were done for i believe the uh, stage production of Dracula that they had done and they're just really cool plus it has gorgeous end papers and this really cool printed edge I just I don't know I love it and it's got like a velvet blood blood colored cover I just I was so excited to find this <laughs> um and yeah it was also part of the buy two get one free and then I had to get this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous cloth bound um, compilation of uh, Poe's poems. I'm a huge Edgar Allan Poe fan. Uh, the Bells and Other Poems. And there's some unbelievably beautiful illustrations. One, the paper is just this like smooth, soft, glossy amazingness, but the illustrations are just fantastic. I mean, just, I just, I'm in love with them. So that was another one that I just, I couldn't resist and just, I don't know. They only had like two copies left and I was, I just had to, I just had to. Um, and then probably the biggest, dumbest purchase. <laughs> so I read the Witcher series quite some time ago and I really, really enjoyed it, but never enough to pick up copies. But now they've done these like, ugh. sorry to grunt into the computer, the camera. They've done this really cool paperback collection that has like the really cool stylized imagery on it. I love the red spines and yes, it's a Netflix tie in and I flip and hate it. <laughs> like I love the artwork and then they have to ruin it with this Netflix non removable sticker thing. And I'm just, super bitter but at the same time I love everything else about this particular edition um I really enjoyed the series enough that I want to own it but not enough that I want to get the hardcover editions especially when I like 90% of this release uh this is a stupid section why why you do this why um but aside from that this was also part of that big sale and I thought this is a good time to pick it up. And so I did. But yeah, so those were my Amazon purchases. Moving onward. Um, I had never actively purchased from Pango before. I'd read about it, I'd watched videos on it, and I'd thought about it a lot, but I was always a little bit hesitant. I I'm one of those used book buyers who's always a little bit like wary of diving in. And so I did. I really like Taylor's books in general. I find them really entertaining. It's been years since I read her first series, the oh, Smoke and Bone. Again, it's been years, but I did, I did really enjoy that. Um, I was working very closely with the uh, teen librarian where I am and we both went back and forth about it and we really enjoyed talking about it and chatting about it and being able to chat with the teens about it and then um, I'd started this series Strange the Dreamer really loved it uh, read both on ebook and then found the first book for really really cheap and then just promptly <laughs> forgot about the fact that I didn't have the second book so I got this from a great seller on Pango. She was really nice. She answered all my questions and I wouldn't, I'm sure it was super annoying because again, I'd never purchased before. And so I thought I'm just going to ask her stuff. And she answered immediately. She was really friendly. She shipped incredibly fast. Um, I'll link to her little shop when I get the chance, but so I'm very happy with this. It has very little wear at all. I would never be able to guess that this was even used. Um, I've had worse copies coming directly from the bookstore. Uh, as far as shelfware goes. So incredibly excited, have already made a couple other purchases from um, Pango, though those are probably gonna be a couple weeks before they land. But yeah, I'm happy to add this one to the collection too. Okay, oh, so this is um, First 100 Years of Yale Younger Poets. If you aren't familiar, Yale every year features a particular poet and sort of celebrates them. And this is just sort of a compilation of the first 100 that they did. 
they've they've tried very hard the university's tried very hard to be progressive in their selection of these poets and so you get a really interesting mix of perspectives and it's it's really quite interesting to see the sort of mindset for who they are promoting throughout the years this is a yale university press release um it's a great it's it's a really great publishing house and they put together incredible incredible pieces i believe if you have a code which i'll put below uh you can get 50 percent off anything that was published before march of 2003 i think that sale is still going on they have incredible incredible art books uh, mm -hmm. this was one of those books that i saw on the sale and i was like oh i'm getting this and it's just beautifully put together i've been already been reading some of the poems and i I'm really excited about being able to dive into some of these artists who I am just not at all familiar with. Some names, yes. And that's what's really cool is that you see some names who really picked up steam and then some that didn't. And, you know, some of the ones that didn't are just as brilliant as the others who were really ended up really well known. So excellent, excellent find. Really excited to add this. I don't know why I never picked up the second book in the Illumine files. I really enjoy this YA series. It's great. I have the first and the third books, never picked up the second. Uh, so I just ordered this uh, via um, Amazon's marketplace with uh, a seller. This is one of those cases where I was not, in fact, happy with the way the book ended up as far as quality goes. Outside, it looks excellent. I mean, there's like no shelf wear on this thing. But then on the inside, like this binding is so loose. I'm like, I'm very, I've, I've read it. I've had, I have like, I've, I've read it on ebook. I've listened to it and it's great, but I don't know how often I'm going to reach for this just because I'm concerned that the binding is just going to fall apart. So in that case, this is one of those fails for me as far as used book hunting, but it was at a good price. So I'm not devastated. I do wish that the condition corresponded with what was said in the listing but it is what it is that's what one of the things that happens with use book fight hunting sometimes you win sometimes you lose um speaking of wins so um thrift books is one of those places that i have always had a fairly good luck with and i did like a nice little mini haul primarily of poetry and um a couple of classics uh as mentioned, I have not collected classics in 20 plus years. So this is me like diving back in. Um, one of my favorite poets of all time is Walt Whitman. So uh, I picked up the deluxe uh, edition from Penguin of his Leaves of Grass. Uh, if you are not familiar with his poetry, you absolutely need to be. He's, his, his words are just so beautifully put together and so emotional and evocative. It's just I love reading his poetry. I just really, really do. And it always makes me emotional when I read his his lines and you can just tell how he was feeling when he was writing. Um, I also just in general have always really enjoyed the Penguin Deluxe Classics editions. Uh, they have like the French sides. So you have the, you end up with sort of the, the wraparound covers. Every cover, uh, almost every cover is done by a different artist in slightly different style. And it, they're just, they're beautiful, beautiful books. I mean, they just really are. They have like the decal edging and it's just a great, I think, collection from Penguin. I'm very, very happy to ever, to always continue to look for these. Um, the portable Dorothy Parker, big fan of Dorothy Parker. Love her stuff. She's just amazing. She's so, can I say Sure, I might have to blip that out, but she is, and it's glorious. Love her. Uh, Robert Frost. I am a basic girl sometimes, and I love me some Robert Frost. Also, um, Penguin Deluxe Edition, as was the Dorothy Parker. Um, I guess this was all Penguin Deluxe. Um, Anna Karenina. This is my absolute favorite Russian... I think this is my absolute favorite Russian novel. I'm thinking through my others and I'm like, oh, there are a couple that are real close. But I think because this is probably the first Russian novel I read, it just holds a special place in my heart. I love the story and the tragedy and the beauty. And it's just so beautifully written. It's just like, I just, I absolutely adore this. I also think that this edition is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm just really happy to have it again. Penguin Deluxe 
has those really nice French sides, the deco edging. And it's a beautiful, beautiful cover. And my last one from Thrift Books, um, The Call of Cthulhu uh, and Other Weird Stories. I am a massive horror fan. You have to have H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, and this is one of the ones that i had been eyeing for for quite some time. I have a couple hard covers. Um, I know I haven't, I said I not bought really many um, classics in years and years. This is one, I, I do have a hardcover um, Lovecraft that I did find at a used bookstore that I absolutely bought and because it was an absolutely gorgeous leather bound and I had to have it. Uh, but there are very few and far between. But that was my thrift books haul. Uh, it looks like I just focused on Penguin Deluxes from that set, but all of those very excited about. I worked library. We have a library book sale all the time. If you have a local library and you've never checked out their library book sales, you 100% should because the books are insanely cheap. Um, I picked up a copy of The Marriage Plots by Jeffrey Eugenies. Uh, I love Virgin's the I, it sounds really weird to say it this way, but I love his other novels, The Virgin Suicides and um, Middlesex. He's an incredible writer. I have not actually read this one yet. Um, I know I'd heard some mixed uh, things from a couple of my coworkers, but I don't care. I'm going to try it anyway. And I got it for 25 cents. So mm, uh, if I don't like it. And then, so I know this is going to make some people hate me. I am not a big Ernest Hemingway fan. This is one of the ones that I'm going to reread and see if I hate it a little bit less. Uh, Movable Feast, I recall being one of the Hemingway novels that I hated the least. So maybe I'll love it now. I kind of doubt it, but I don't know. So we're going to try it again. 25 cents. Make sure you check out your library book sale. PSA on to a half price books. If you are a librarian out there, did you know we also are part of the educators discount? I did not realize that. I never read the fine print. I said I read educators and it was like, not including me. I am not a teacher, um, but we are. So if you are a librarian, you also will get 10% off if you sign up. Uh, book I've loved for years and years. Song of Achilles. Excellent, excellent, excellent book. Um, so I know that retellings of mythology have been really, really trendy in the last several months to years. Uh, I like some of them and don't like others. I'm currently reading a couple that were highly recommended and I am having some struggles getting through them. Uh, but this, this is absolute gold. If you have never read Song of Achilles and you are interested in retellings of these uh, ancient myths, this is where you need to start. This is amazing. Achilles in this, oh, chef's kiss. Seriously, so good. So, so good. Her Circe is also incredible. Um, I don't know why I don't have copies of these. I read them forever ago and I don't know if I just thought I had copies or if I just was like, I don't need it. I'll just keep checking it out. I don't know, but I finally have a copy and I'm very happy. Um, Henry James, Turn of the Screw and Other Ghost Stories. I love Turn of the Screw. I don't care what people say. I know it's not one of James's most popular works. I know that like th there, there are other classic works of his that are much more highly rated, but I love Turn of the Screw. I think it's incredible. I think it's eerie, atmospheric, and phenomenal. If you like ghost stories, um, if you like something a little bit edgy with just this fantastic, creepy vibe, you have to read it if you haven't before. Strongly recommended. Very excited to reread. Um, massive Kazuo Ishiguro fan. Uh, this, I wanted a copy of Remains of the Day that is not falling apart. My copy is. Uh, this is an incredible book. All of his books I really enjoy, but this one I think is probably one of the more accessible novels that he does uh, as far as just being <laughs> really very literary fiction styled. Uh, some of his others have more of a science fiction and fantasy bent, and I know not everybody loves that, uh, but Remains of the Day is just amazing. Strongly recommended. Ah, one that <laughs> I know that my library's book club had read before. I'd heard fantastic things and I just never got around to it. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Uh, she is a woman who struggles with social skills and 
relating to other people and just really living a full life. And I'm always interested in characters that are a little bit like that, that have a bit of a misanthropic vibe and, and characters that I think you see really develop and eventually embrace the world in their own terms, on their own terms. I think that's really, really part of kind of key to making me fall in love with them. And I've heard that this book is kind of like that. So I'm hoping good things about this one. Ah, another Penguin ed edition of uh, a Dickens novel, A Tale of Two Cities. It also has great expectations with it. Um, much like the deluxe editions, it does have the French flaps, but I don't think that this is a uh, Penguin Deluxe. At least it doesn't indicate so anywhere. Uh, this one's just Penguin Fiction, Penguin, a Penguin book fiction. Uh, but it is a beautiful cover. Apparently it was also one of Oprah's book club selections. Uh, but but uh, these are both really, really phenomenal. I love Great Expectations. I think it's one of my favorite books. I'm a big Dickens fan. Um, uh, but it is, it is a, a really good duo of novels in this particular selection. So excited to add that. And this is totally new to me, the complete Father Brown stories. Now I love Agatha Christie. There are a couple other uh, British authors that do phenomenal, phenomenal detective stories. And I just, I kind of want to sort of diversify my uh, British mystery writers uh, beyond Christie and Conan Doyle. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I feel like G.K. Chesterton might be it. I do enjoy the Father Brown series on BBC, so I figured let's read about them. I also am really happy to have a copy in the Wordsworth editions. If you are not uh, familiar with Wordsworth's books, they are super duper floppy, and so you don't end up with the annoying spine creases even when you have a book that is massive. Like this is 780 plus pages, but I can read easily anything in the text without ending up with a bent spine. So very excited to have found a uh, Wordsworth edition. Uh, and Wordsworths are also like very, very affordable in the world of um, paperback books. Like usually, you know, the Penguin Classic edition, not the deluxe, but just the classic is like what, $18.99 at this point. And this one is, I think, MSRP not even 10 or maybe it's around 10. Uh, so just a really nice addition, easy to read text, like, and again, just nice and fabulously floppy. So it's easy to read. Oh. As mentioned, I really do love used book hunting uh, and Abe Books provides me with hours of hunting, shopping enjoyment. Uh, so again, with the increasing my classics and poetry is one of the big things that I love and missed about classics. Alfred Lord Tennyson, one of my favorite poets. Uh, this is just a collection of his poetry uh, that has some really great titles in it. Uh, and it's also the Penguin Classics. And I like the Penguin Classics, the black uh, binding and everything releases, but they're not as floppy as the Wordsworth, so this spine's gonna bend and break, and it already has. Like I said, it's not, it's, it is used. It's not terribly bent and broken, but a little bit. I probably at some point want to pick up the uh, Every Man's Pocket Library collection of Tennyson, but for now, this is really good. Um, I'd mentioned before, I'm a big fan of Naomi Novik. Um, I have already read this series. Uh, via audiobook from work and I just I really really like her writing and I wanted to have physical copies I loved um, Spinning Silver and just want to pick up everything that she's written uh, Okay, so this is one of my guilty pleasure books <sighs> Stalking Jack the Ripper that series. Uh, I hate this <laughs> James Patterson presents uh, my coworkers and I are have strong feelings about James Patterson. If you are a fan, I apologize. If I if you feel I am being disrespectful, I'll I really don't care. Uh, um, I wanted to hate this, but I actually really really enjoyed this whole series. I love the main character. I find her really really interesting and entertaining, and and I I did find the books really great. Uh, I think Carrie Montescalo. 
uh, does a great job with setting the scene, a tone, and her dialogue's really snappy. And so I would somehow ended up with, I think, the third book. I probably found it at Goodwill somewhere. And so I was like, finally, let's, let's pick up the rest of it. I do want to own it. And so I am slow, not slowly, but I'm slowly-ish getting the rest of the books. The other three, I do have the, I believe, second book in the mail right now. So I'll have the whole collection when it comes in. But if you like sort of odd historical mystery, murdery retellings with some horror thrown in, um, check out uh, Maniscalco's Stalking Jack the Ripper series. It's really entertaining and she has some really solid writing. Uh, so yeah. Ah, a another Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. I actually missed this. Um, I'm a huge fan of folk tales and fairy tales and just urban legend and 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 in in general stories like that. And so I didn't realize that Philip Pullman did a sort of collection of Grimm's fairy tales. And I'm so excited for this. I have been obsessed with Pullman since Dark Materials came out way back in the day. Uh, and so I think that his take on uh, the Grimm's Brothers tales are going to be amazing. So very excited for this one. Uh, I am a massive Sir Arthur Conan Doyle fan, a massive, massive fan. I have another uh, purchase tied to this that I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, this is just uh, Penguin's Classics Deluxe Edition of his novels. So it's going to have the four biggies, of course, Study in Scarlet, uh, Hound of the Baskervilles, Sinophore, and the Valley of Fear. I have this all in an anthology series. It's heavy and it's hardbound and hard to read unless you've got a table. So I really liked ha like having a paperback readable copy. And again, is in this amazing, amazing cover. I just love all of the different artwork that they do on these. And then it has those French covers and it really is totally a wraparound spine. So if you are a Holmes fan, I have actually read this version before. I it's it's very well done. Um, there's no real like there's no annotation or anything, but excellent excellent cap copy to have in a reading library. Okay, um, another one that I need to reread to see if I like it any more than I did when I was a kid. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. I know this is another one that's going to get me the side eye. I flip and hate this book. Hate it. I hated both Kathy and Heathcliff. I, it was like a head desking moment. I'm someone who grew up loving classics and absolutely adoring pretty much everything you put in my hands. And my mother was a big fan of this novel. Um, I'm going to talk about another one in just a second that you're probably going to super side eye me because I do love this other book, but I just, I just, Um, as a teenager, I just, I really couldn't handle either Kathy or Heathcliff. I, I just couldn't. I was just like, you people are miserable, miserable human beings. Uh, but this is part of the tour line that they did several years ago. Um, and it is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Like just, just, just gorgeous. And I have, I already have a couple of other books of theirs. They did Pride and Prejudice. She, the, the artist did Pride and Prejudice as well. And that was an excellent cover. Uh, but yeah, it's again, that wraparound, that beautiful wraparound from uh, Penguin Deluxe. So we'll see if I like them any better as an adult. I don't have high hopes, but maybe I will find more empathy in my sad, shriveled heart for them. And then this one, Jane Eyre. By Charlotte Bronte. Okay, so yes, Rochester is definitely kind of bad, but I can understand how he got to the point he got to where when we meet him in this book. Um, no spoilers or anything. I will at some point probably do another reread and a review of this, but I love Jane Eyre. I also absolutely adore Jane. Like I, I love her, and there's so many passages in Char with Charlotte's writing where I just. It makes my heart turn over and I just, you know, you get that sort of like heavy in your chest feeling and it just, I just love this book. I love this book. And again, I know I'm probably getting the side eye from some people. How can you like Rochester and not Heathcliff? 
I just, reasons, reasons, okay? Um, but yes, so this was another one, Penguin Classics Deluxe. All used, all in really excellent condition for really decent prices. And that's kind of the fun for me. Like I love finding like the best version that I can for the best price. Uh, and then Ryanosuke Akutagawa's Rashomon. These stories are amazing. If you have any interest in delving into Japanese literature, start with some of the short stories are that are just of... so easy to fall into with really exciting, exciting adventures, but also just these really full characters that get that just sort of fly off the page in just a few paragraphs. You already are totally caught in. And then the way that the language moves, it's just when you get a good translation, and I have read this before, and the translation is like really fluid and it really feels legit. Um, because there's sometimes if you have a bad translation, it just feels like Google Translate and it, it's just awful and it's just a terrible experience. But that is not the case with this. Um, who are you translating? Away? Jay Rubin does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So strongly recommended. This is also a Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition with the manga style art. And I just think that is such an interesting choice that they made as far as the uh, book cover designs go uh, with many other stories uh, doing that so whole graphic novel vibe. Love it. Um, this little pile is from my local charity shop. All of these books were 25 or 50 cents. Uh, some of them I've read, and but most of them I have not. Uh, William Trevor's Love in Summer. I know nothing about it, but the, the, the book cover sounded interesting. Ellie Dillahan is a shy orphan girl married to a man whose life has been blighted by an unspeakable tragedy. She lives a quiet life in the Irish town of Rathmoy until she meets Florian Kildary, a young photographer preparing to leave Ireland and his past forever. The chance intersection of these two lost souls sets in motion a poignant love affair that requires Ellie to make an impossible choice. In spare, exquisite prose, William Trevor delves into the circumscribed lives of, peop of the people of Rathmoy, exploring their passions and frustrations during one long summer. So it just felt like timely, summertime, you know. Uh, also, I tend to really enjoy um, stories set in small Irish towns. So I thought, eh, we'll give it a try. Uh, it also is a notable book from the New York Times Book Review. Those are kind of hit or miss for me. That doesn't really mean a whole lot, uh, but couldn't hurt. I found Richard Wright's Native Son. This is an incredible, incredible book. Uh, I needed a copy of it and it was, I think, 25 cents. So yeah, picked it up. Carlos Ruiz Zafon's The Shadow of the Wind. I've been wanting to read this for years. Never have, uh, but very excited to have found a very affordable copy. So for 25 cents, it looks pretty solid. I mean, again, 25 cents. I'm a big, big fan of Celeste Ng. Um, I, I fell in love with everything I never told you, and I just haven't been able to to stop loving her writing. She she also does a really interestingly well thought out job of describing the Asian American experience in small Midwestern towns um, because it's a very specific existence uh, and she does a great job with it and it's really relatable. Just, I just really uh, enjoy her writing and the way that she creates characters. Uh, so yeah, very much looking forward to adding to this to my collection. This minty fresh copy of the 25th anniversary edition of Alice Hoffman's Practical Magic. I read this when I was a teenager. It's it's just a fun book. I like um, quite a bit of what I've read from Alice Hoffman. I haven't read everything she's done, but I, I know that I liked Practical Magic. And again, it was hard to resist a 25 cent, 25 cent book. And it's a really nice edition, this, 25, this 25th anniversary. It's really nice. Um, Hoffman does a new intro to it. So... I'm excited to read that. If nothing else, I mean, I'm very excited to read that. Uh, and then this was another one that uh, we had done in a book club and I never got to read. The Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend, a novel by Katrina Bivald. Uh, I've heard mixed things about it, but I thought it sounded really interesting and figured it couldn't hurt. These are all books from another local charity shop, uh, but one that's much larger, 
book prices are a little bit higher, but I was able to find far more of what I'm hoping to expand into, like maybe, namely more classic novels uh, and plays. Uh, I managed to find a very, very nice copy of the Penguin Classics edition of Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Uh, it's one of those plays, I was in this play in college. Uh, I really enjoy the writing. I think the story is really one that is interesting to delve into and like to analyze when you're comparing what was going on in the world at the time with the scare and everything and tying that in with the witch hunts and all of these fascinating parallels and it's 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 very good if you've never read it before i do think it's a play that reads very easily as text or prose i should say uh billy collins is an incredible poet if you've never read his work you need to. Uh, I found this copy of Ballistics, which I've never actually seen in the wild. Um, I ha I've read it on ebook, but I was really happy. I do collect his um, releases, and this one is one I'm very excited about. Uh, yeah, he was one of he was a former poet laureate of the U.S. and just just an incredible, incredible wordsmith. A fine balance by Rohinton Mystery. I have never read this, but I thought it sounded really interesting. Um, with a compassionate realism and narrative sweep that recall the work of Charles Dickens, I told you I'm a big fan of Dickens, uh, this magnificent novel ch captures all the cruelty and corruption, dignity and heroism of India. Uh, but it does sound really interesting to me. I'm very excited to read this. I know nothing about this novel, so... Cormac McCarthy, All the Pretty Horses, this particular chari charity bookshop had a, a really lovely display of McCarthy's work. And this is one that I have never read. Um, he, I, I think most people probably know him from The Road, uh, which is an incredible novel. I already have it. I didn't, so I didn't feel the need to pick up another copy. But um, this one is the first in a trilogy called The Border Trilogy. It tells of young John Grady Cole, the last of a long line of Texas ranchers. Across the border, Mexico beckons, beautiful and desolate, rugged and cruelly civilized. With two companions, he sets off on an idyllic, sometimes comic adventure to a place where dreams are paid for in blood. So this sounds so far off from the road. <laughs> Uh, but I'm really interested to see how McCarthy is able to blend what sounds like both dark and light themes together. Uh, and I really love his writing style in The Road, so I'm excited to see how this one works out for me. Again, another to add to my physical collection, a physical collection of Kazuo Ishiguro's work. Uh, this is When We Were Orphans. I have he's another one of those authors that I've read everything he's done and I I just I can't say enough good things I don't know why I hadn't been collecting his stuff I just hadn't I hadn't really been collecting anything I just it was like a mismatch of whatever was given to me and whatever I happened to find at like Goodwills and used bookstores so uh, another one never let me go this one destroyed me the first time I read it and on subsequent readings I am less affected, but only because I think I prepare myself for the for the way that this works, how this works out. So uh, and in any case, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal novel. Again, you can't go wrong with Ishiguro. Um, oh, Graham Greene, Our Man in Havana. I have read a couple of novels from Graham Greene and I really, really liked them. One is uh, My Travels with My Aunt, which is very clever and quite fun. And the other one, oh, they made a movie with Brendan Fraser and Michael Caine, like The Quiet American, I want to say. Yes, The Quiet American. That is excellent. That book is amazing. I keep on meaning to watch the movie because I can't imagine that it's not unbelievable because both Michael Caine and honestly Brendan Fraser even when he was younger in this particular role I think would work uh but anyway uh Our Man in Havana I have not read this particular novel of his but I'm excited too I like his writing a lot <laughs> okay another of my classic rereads I'm hoping I will like a little more Gabriel Garcia Marquez is one of those authors 
I want to love. I really want to because all of my bookish friends that I adore and respect love his writing. I have never gotten through this book. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. <laughs> like I don't hate it. It's not like with Wuthering Heights where I actively like want to fling the book across the room 90% of the time. I just, I just can't fall into this. Like I, I just can't. It just, it's a, it, it's been, again, I think I read I, the last time I tried, <laughs> tried to read this was when I was in my late twenties. So it's been a little over 10 years. Maybe I'm a more patient reader now. I kind of don't know about that, but I'm going to give it another try. I, another try. I really want to like it. <laughs> this is from the local bookstore, uh, at the local college near where I am. And it's one of those bookshops that I absolutely love. The people have been there for years and years and years. They do primarily used, but they do some uh, new, and I do try and buy new from them whenever I can. But these mostly are used books. Uh, Stendhal's The Bread and the Black. Uh, I do like this. Uh, and I just happened to find it in um, Penguin Classics Edition. This is one of... So they've kind of changed their production over the years, the Penguin class, the Black Classics. And I don't know when exactly it happened, but this is one of those Penguin Classics that I absolutely love. So it's all floppy and easy to open without breaking the spine. Uh, but yeah, in any case, uh, The Red and the Black, excellent, excellent book. Uh, very excited to add this and probably do a reread. I haven't read this in years, but I, I loved it when I first did and I'm excited to go there again. Henry James, What Maisie Knew. I do, this is one of the James uh, non-horror novels that I do really enjoy. Um, it follows this young girl as she grows up uh, being fought over by her two divorced parents. And it's such a weirdly timely novel for something that was written so long ago. Uh, and it just amazes me how how the horribleness of some situations can translate like decades and decades and decades and decades down the line. But it really is phenomenally well done. I really enjoy, re enjoy is such a hard word for this book, but I think it's really well done. I do consider it one of the books of his that I really do enjoy. Uh, so yeah, what Maisie knew. Ah, uh, Yusunari Kawabata's Snow Country. This is beautiful, beautiful prose, man. Like, it's literature where it's this really full setting of the scene. There's this serenity to things, even when like incredibly frustrating things are happening. There's this, there's still this beauty to it. Um, and Kawabata does that a lot. Like there's incredible beauty in a lot of really tragic or horrible moments. And, and I think that's something that, you find a lot in Japanese literature. Yasunari Kawabata's The Master of Go. I have not read this, so I'm excited. This one uh, is, I guess, about a, a battle between two Go masters, kind of. Um, this is already, God, this is already 45 minutes. I'm not going to go too far into it. But when I read the book description, I was like, I like this. I already know I like the author. We're going to give it a shot. Um, I have not picked up anything by Kawabata that I have not liked. Uh, he has several novels. Uh, so I, I am, I have high hopes, but yes, another, another used book from the shop that I like. I am definitely working on expanding my Dickens collection early on because as I mentioned, he's one of my favorite authors. And this is another one of the better floppy editions. This is David Copperfield. Um, this is not one of my favorite novels from Dickens. I do prefer some of his other works more, but it is excellent. It is, is it's not like I don't like it. I'm very excited to do a reread when I get the chance. Um, I actually already have started a little teeny tiny bit, uh, but yes, very happy to have this in the collection. Uh, A.S. Byatt's Possession. Um, I recently watched the movie adaptation of this. I'd read this years and years ago. Uh, and I liked it back then. I thought it was really, really interesting. And I loved the sort of um, time jumps that they were, the characters were doing, uh, that the storyline was doing. And I 
just happened to see the movie. I can't remember. It was free somewhere. I don't know if it was YouTube or whatever, but um, I saw it and I, I, I watched it and I'm not a big Gwyneth Paltrow fan, but I thought the trans the adaptation was well done enough that I want to go back and reread the uh, original work just to see if it, if, if, just to see, just to see what's going on and, and to see if I enjoy it more. Um, Heinrich Boll's Billiards at Half Past Nine. I have not read this. I actually haven't read any Boll, uh, but uh, a couple of my friends are obsessed. So I figured I might as well delve in. And my one new copy of anything from them, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. I don't always love um romance novels but this is not like your traditional romance novel this is you've got mail if you've got mail had a baby with zombies and westerns and a little bit of science fiction <laughs> um i know that sounds strange but that's what this book is uh again you've got mail plus zombies plus science fiction and westernness and gods in mythology. <laughs> oh, it's, um, I don't ever hire me to write the back of the book copy for anything. Uh, but I loved this book. I thought it was so much fun. Uh, and I really, as soon as I was finished, I'm like, I want to own this. I, I really do. And, and I really did enjoy it enough that as soon as I saw it on the new shelf, I was like, I'm gonna buy it from, from them. Okay, far and away, the heaviest books. Um, I am a massive, massive Arthur Conan Doyle fan. Um, my father was a huge Sir Arthur Conan Doyle fan. He was also a huge Tolkien fan, which is why I have, <laughs> which is why I have like the expensive heavy copies and only just recently purchased the cheaper paperbacks. But if you are a Sherlock Holmes fan, you 100% need these books in your life. So these are the new, oof, <laughs> new annotated Sherlock Holmes and the complete annotated Sherlock Holmes at that. Uh, and when I say new, I mean new as in that's what they're called. These came out, I believe they started coming out in 2005 when I just finished college. I did not have the money at the time to purchase these. And then I was really honestly in my hiatus of purchasing any classic novels in general. So I put it off and put it off and suddenly these were out of print. <laughs> and so by the time I could put money into these, they just were not really very much available. Uh, and so a friend of mine a little while ago was announced that she's going to be moving. Uh, and hey, she's not bringing along her books because it's, she, she's, she thinks she's moving permanently, but she's not sure. And she doesn't want to put things in storage and then have to come back and yada, yada, yada. She's like, so I have some really cool collections. Does anybody want? And then she sh did a pan over. And the second I saw these spines, I was like, that's what I want. I, what, I, what are you asking for it? And she essentially like, she asked for like nothing and they're pretty much new. I'm, I mean, if you can't tell that they've even been opened, they're beautiful and the annotations in the, so if you're not really familiar with how this style of annotated work goes, and let me see if I can actually get these out without killing them and myself, because they are heavy and huge. Um, you have your story, but along the sides, you will also have all kinds of supplementary material in addition to actual annotations, sort of giving a fuller, more in-depth uh information about the time, certain terms that they're using, why certain things were relevant at the time, because that's the thing that's so interesting about Doyle's work. It's so intricate and everything fits together so perfectly that sometimes if you aren't familiar with those customs from this particular era, you might miss little bits and pieces. So being able to read something that's so fleshed out and to have all of those extra little bits and pieces come into play, it's it's just amazing. It's an amazing, amazing way to read his novels and short stories. This is not something I would recommend if you've never read any of the Holmes novels or stories before. Definitely just read your traditional version. But if you are a big fan and you want that really immersive experience with all of the extra bits and bobs, you absolutely have to have this version, the new annotated. I'd read them before, 
but I really wanted to own them. I have uh, another annotated edition uh, that's, that's two books. It's the green set. If you are a fan, you probably already know the green set. Uh, excellent annotations, but I actually had heard Leslie Klinger, who is the one who does like the edits and the notes for this. And you can just tell she's such a brilliant, brilliant scholar and fangirl blended together. Uh, and I love, those are the people that I want to read their opinions and their thoughts. Those are the ones, the ones who I know grew up with it, who just adore it as much as I do. So very, very excited to own these. And it's just a beautiful flipping set, man. Like it's heavy AF, but so pretty. And then it has like the silhouette on the one end. And then, whew, I don't know if you can see the top. It has little tiny Holmes silhouettes on top and on the sides. It's just, it's just really, I am so pleased. I can't, I don't even have words. I'm so excited to have this. Um, these are all from BAM. I really like trolling the shelves for used books at Books A Million. It's hard to find because it's not like they have a separate used section, but I find some really cool things. Um, Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. I love Sarah Waters' writing. If you haven't read Tipping the Vel Velvet and you are interested in a beautiful, bold, LGBTQ friendly story that delves into period piece relationships, uh, some of which are horrible. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, when I say LGBTQ friendly, I mean like there's LGBTQ content in it. I like, but some of some of the way people treat each other is just horrendous. But I think it also feels very real and really immersive. And then when you get to the crux of the main character story, you really you really feel for everything that she goes through. Anyway, tipping the velvet, not even a book that I have with me in this new collection, <laughs> this new purchase set. But I loved that. Fingersmith is also incredible. They've made a couple of uh, adaptations of this, both in English language, and they also made um, a Korean adaptation of this as well, which was excellent, um, called The Handmaiden. So if you get the chance, really, really good. Uh, but this is like kind of a mystery thriller with um, LGBTQ undertones under and overtones. Uh, but it's it's really, really excellent. The prose is really tightly woven. Uh, and I love I, I do think the characters are absolutely fascinating in this. And there's some heart rending moments, but there are also some like it's just good. It's just a good book. Strongly recommended. Happy to have it. This one was not used, but it was in the like bargain pile. Uh, this is just a collection of Joe Hill stories. I really enjoy horror. I really do like Joe Hill's work. Joe Hill, if you don't happen to know is Stephen King's son, but he's worked very hard to sort of make his own name for himself. Uh, I do think he has a very different style from Stephen King, which is great. Uh, but yeah, so happy to add this collection. Um, the final novel in uh, the A Bone Season uh, series, uh, The Mask Falling, I have slowly been trying to get the hardback copies. I read it via uh, ebook ages ago, really enjoyed the series, thought it was definitely very entertaining and just would like to have physical copies of it. And that was also not used. It was also just in their bargain uh, bin selection. This one, super excited. Uh, another Penguin Deluxe Classics Edition. This one is uh, The Greek Myths by Robert Graves, and it has that cool graphic novel style art and it's like the old school comic book way of, of stylizing things so which I think is so like smart to do with these myths I just I don't know I just think it's really cool I'm a huge huge mythology nerd so definitely excited to reread these the last one from BAM is a used copy of the Penguin Dictionary of American Folklore um I have a couple of other books that are similar vein from Penguin that are sort of like dictionaries of particular style of writing or whatever. And I just, they're, they're really very entertaining to read. They, 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 they are encyclopedias. So you don't get like huge amounts of information, but you do get plenty and it's, it's an excellent, excellent option to read. So the Penguin classics book, this is, I think that this I got from, where was it? Local bookstore. 
um, a local independent bookstore. And it's just this sort of collection of information about Penguin book covers. And I really love Penguin's releases, especially all of their different classics. So this was something I definitely wanted to check out. And it's just little tidbits of information alongside the actual covers. And it's totally up my alley. I do a lot of design work uh, with, with regard to libraries. And this is like my this is the kind of thing that I geek out over. So I was very excited to find this uh, in good condition and it was a really good price. So very excited to have this. Uh, also from the same bookstore, I found this really cool book of yokai, uh, Mysterious Creatures of Japanese Folklore. I have several books about yokai, but this one was by Michael Dylan Foster, who is a associate professor of the Department of Folklore and Eth Ethnomusicology uh, and the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures at Indiana University. But some of the other things that he's written I have read, so I'm excited to see how he does with this. I find uh, yokai to be fascinating. I've been hearing about them since I was a child. My grandmother used to talk about them and like tell me ghost stories when I was very little. Uh, and so I've always been obsessed with uh, these stories and how they pertain to today and where they came from. And so I just always, anytime I see something like this, I pick it these up. These purchases were all from Book Outlet. I cannot resist a deal. There were no, they, they right now are having like some 25% off sale. I don't really know how legit that sale is as far as will the prices go up or will they pretty much stay the same after the sale is over. But I found a lot of stuff and I had not been purchasing books so I just went a little bit nuts. And now as I sit here surrounded by piles, I'm both thrilled and horribly embarrassed, <laughs> but is what it is. And I am at the end of the day, very happy with things that I found. Um, this is The Hidden Palace by Helene Recker, Wecker, not Recker, Wecker. Uh, and this is a sequel to The Gollum and the Ginny. Uh, Gollum and the Ginny was excellent sort of magical realism, fantasy, just all around excellent, excellent read. I didn't even realize that there was a sequel available, so glad to add this. T. Kingfisher's Nettle and Bone. I have not read this, but I've read some of her other work and I loved that. Uh, I've also heard a lot of people both in real life with coworkers and also on BookTube and BookTok really enjoyed it. Uh, I love the premise. Uh, this isn't the kind of fairy tale where the princess marries a prince. It's the one where she kills him. That works for me. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited to, to delve into this. This might be the next thing that I read after I finally finish the horrible audiobook that I'm reading right now. I just need it to be done. Okay, onward. Ah. Emily Henry's Book Lovers. Again, not the biggest like straight on romance fan, but very excited for this one. Um, I, 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 I've, I've read this one. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I do like stories about small towns. I, I grew up in a very, very small town. Like if you've seen Gilmore Girls and you know Stars Hollow, that's essentially where I grew up. Uh, it's up in the Midwest, but same, same kinds of people, same kinds of like ridiculous antics. And they travel to the main character here and her sister, they travel to a town very similar to it. Um, and the romance of course is lovely, but I, I just, I love overall the setting and it was just a really fun read. Uh, sometimes I just want something light and fluffy and this, um, absolutely fulfilled that. These ones both kind of go together. Um, Alwyn Hamilton's Traitor to the Throne and Hero at the Fall, which are the second and third book in the Rebel of the Sands novels. Uh, I purchased Re Rebel of the Sands and read it forever ago and then just promptly <laughs> forgot about the series. It's a really good book. Like Rebel of the Sands is excellent. I really liked it. I totally don't know why. I just never continued on, but I didn't. Uh, so when I saw these were available for not very much, I pick them up because I do want to finish this series. Um, this is a puffin cloth bound of Roger Lancelin Green's The Adventures of Robin Hood. 
I really love these cute little small penguin books. Uh, the cloth bounds are my favorite, but I also have a couple others that are also tiny from Peng from Puffin, Penguin Puffin, um, that are the Bloom series. Anyway, uh, Adventures of Robin Hood. It is what it is. They're really fun, exciting, adventuresome stories. I remember these from when I was a kid. Had to have it. Charlotte Perkins Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper and Selected Other Works. Yellow Wallpaper is amazing. Um, I don't know that I know the other stories that are in here, but definitely love Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper. I also am really loving the Penguin Vitae releases. I think these editions are some that I would love to collect pretty much all of. I do love the whole theme of different kinds of diverse perspectives and I, I am excited to, to work on collecting these ones. Um, E.M. Forster's Maurice. I love E.M. Forster. I've read most of Forster's works. Uh, just if I see one, I know I'm going to pick it up. I would love to have everything that Forster has written. So to add to my classics collection, uh, here's a puffin in bloom of a little princess. Again, just one of those classic children's stories that I know I want to own. Uh, I love Hodgson Brunette stuff, Secret Garden, Little Princess, uh, all of them. Next one uh, is the cloth bound edition of J.M. Barry's Peter Pan. It's Peter Pan. I and it's a beautiful cover. I love these cloth bound ones even more than the blue in bloom. I do think that the puffin cloth bounds are extraordinarily lovely. Uh, Nguyen Du's The Song of Q. I have no idea if I pronounced that properly. I probably didn't the, as far as the, the Song of Q. Uh, Nguyen, I think is pronounced Nguyen. Uh, but this is a it's sort of like the one of the most famous epic Vietnamese poems. Uh, I have never read it, so I'm very excited. It's a huge adventure story. I have wanted to read it for ages, and I'm glad that I have a physical copy to check out now. Uh, Sabah Tahir's Sky Beyond the Storm. This is the final book in her Ember in the Ashes series. Uh, I love this series. I really hate that the book covers change after the first two books, but whatever. Um, I do really love her writing and I just needed to have the whole set. I just, again, forgot that I was collecting the series and then just never picked up the final book, but another children's classic that I absolutely wanted, um, Little Prince, uh, but I do love this book. This is one of those books that I have always adored and that make me cry every time I read it. It doesn't matter how old I get. I love it. Another one of my classics that I want to reread because I hated it when I was a kid. Um, Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Ah, uh, J.D. <laughs> um, you know, Holden, man, Holden. <laughs> They, I, I did not I did not like this when I first read it. We didn't really read classics in school, but I, I, I just read them, you know, just for fun. And I, I know I didn't have to finish any, but I was always one of those people who was like, I, I started it, so I need to finish. I don't know that I ever finished it when I was in high school. I finished it when I was in college, but I, I didn't like it then either. Uh, so we'll see how I feel about it now. Um, the Poison Thread by Laura Purcell. Uh, I just thought that this sounded really good. I've never read it. I actually don't know anything about this book other than the fact that it's supposed to be a really excellent horror thriller. I know one of my friends has read it and was raving about it when she did, but promptly forgot about it. But definitely excited for that. Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekaluk. Um This one, I, you know, Amongst my friends who read horror books, I've heard kind of mixed things, but anytime you involve children doing creepy things in a horror novel, I am there. I am so there for it. Creepy children are terrifying to me. And I understand that the little boy in this is not actually like the scary one, but the fact that he's the one that's drawing like terrifying macabre things is just like perfect. So... Uh, she Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Um, I've read this. I find the 
main character to be so challenging, but in a great way, like she's just really, really interesting character. Really, I, I don't, I don't want to give, I think talking about her makes, gives away a lot about the story. And I don't want to do that for anyone who hasn't read it, but I do think it's an excellent, excellent read. Strongly recommended. Uh, Naomi Novik's The Golden Enclaves. Uh, this is the third book in the series. Again, I've read the series. I love it. I needed to have it because it's excellent. Uh, strongly recommended if you are interested in a really great, um, I guess it is, it is YA, but just in, in a story that will really grab you and sort of pull you in. Uh, and I guess it is a little bit younger targeted, but doesn't feel like it necessarily has to be. Uh, but yeah. So anything by Novick, I honestly recommend. Um, the Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. This is another one of the Penguin Vitae. I have not read this, so I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's supposed to be like stories about these women who live in this apartment house and all the stories sort of blend together and have their these like intricate ties. And I love fiction that does that, that, that brings together like all these little vignettes about different people's lives and into one cohesive work. So very excited for this. Another uh, Puffin in Bloom, Anne of Green Gables. I have so many different editions of Anne of Green Gables, but this one is so cute. Look at her. Um, so yeah, Anne of Green Gables, it's phenomenal. I have loved this book since I was a very little girl. I actually, my grandmother was, she was very good at, uh, making dresses. And so I, I begged and begged and she made me a dress with puff sleeves because I wanted one so badly after reading this when I was little, uh, somewhere in the closet of some place is a photograph of me in a ridiculous puff sleeve dress based on Anne of Green Tables. So tidbit of information. And the final book, God, <laughs> the final book, Emily St. John Mandel's Sea of Tranquility. I have not read this yet, but I loved the Station Eleven book. I haven't watched the series. I've been meaning to. Everyone tells me that I should, but I loved that book so much. It was one of those, it was definitely my book of the year when it came out. So I am absolutely thrilled to have my own copy of Sea of Tranquility. I knew I was going to want it and want to own it. Um, she has some short stories out too that I strongly recommend. Those are really good. Uh, but yeah, so an hour later. Those were my June books. I will never do a haul this big again. I recognize that this was like stupid large, especially for someone who hasn't been buying books in years. Um, but a lot of them really were to sort of fill out that whole collection of classics that I just didn't have, picking up things that I've loved and been wanting to get, filling out like contemporary series or fantasy series. And I'm going to be doing that for the foreseeable future. Like I've been a bad book buyer for a long time. So anyway, if you have miraculously stuck it out this long, thank you so much. Um, this has been <laughs> bizarrely fun and embarrassing. Uh, if you have found this at all entertaining or interesting, if any of you, if you have any questions or you want, please do comment below, consider clicking the like button. And if you happen to be so inclined, think about clicking the subscribe button. Um, I am going to go try and find places to put these on my shelves now. Uh, thank you again for joining me and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.